In this video, Kim Philpotts from Microsoft is going to talk to us all about focus on App UX with .NET MAUI. In his talk, he's going to show you the easy way to build beautiful UX focused apps with .NET MAUI. Check it out, let us know what you think. All right, so uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about, and you know, thanks everyone for joining, is I want to talk about .NET MAUI application design. Uh, so that's a, an area of interest for me. Uh, and when we talk about design, uh, what I like to think about in mobile applications is you know, everything to do with you know, how your user interacts with your app, it feels your app, the way it responds to, uh, to things as well. So as it says here on the slide, the way your application looks and moves and plays is really, really critical to um, you know, how your user uh, basically responds to your application. So it's uh, it's really important stuff. So as uh, William mentioned, my name's Kim Philpotts. Uh, I do work for Microsoft uh, in the skilling uh, division, but you know, I basically, as I mentioned, uh, entered into to Xamarin work uh, many, many years ago. Um, and what I really like working with in terms of Xamarin uh, and now Maui, which we're moving into, which is kind of the evolution of Xamarin, if you like, is, is the application design. That's always been a, an, an area of interest for me. So on the, uh, on the slides here, uh, on the slide, you can see uh, some of my details. So feel free to reach out to me. I'll share these later on, uh, as well as this deck and as well as some code as well. So you can have a look at that later on. Feel free to ask questions in the chat and we can, uh, we can cover those off at the, uh, at the end of the presentation. Now, what is important to, uh, we talked about what, uh, what I am, I'll tell you what I'm not. I'm not a designer. Uh, so like a, a lot of developers, I find design challenging. Um, but, you know, um, one of the things that um, we can do or that we do understand well as developers um, is we know how to break down hard problems into, into easy problems, okay? And UI is exactly the same, okay? There's, you know, you have a look at, you know, you have to create a screen, a designer gives you a screen, you know, it seems really complex, but really when it comes down to it, you just got to break it down into its various parts, you know, its fonts, its colors, uh, its layout and, and work from there. So that's one of the, the great skills that we have. So what I wanted to talk through today is just, um, you know, some of the things in, in Maui um, to achieve some designs. Um, and I'm not going to go heavy into code. Uh, I do have a, a sample application, which you can have a look through uh, later on. But I wanted to start off, first of all, with some common design elements. So these are things that are in all applications and part of the design and just wanted to talk how they're implemented in Maui. Uh, the first of these is uh, splash screens. Okay, uh, We talk about fonts and styles and themes. And some of the earlier presenters touched on some of these, but hopefully I've got a little bit more to add um, as well on top of that. But look, one of the things that used to be a challenge uh, back in Xamarin days was things like splash screens. Um, the tooling now um, for both splash screens and images in general is, is actually quite nice. Uh, it's part of the build process. So you can use things like SVGs. Um, and so what it would do as part of the build process is it will convert those SVGs into to PNGs or you can just use PNGs. So a lot of that stuff with different device densities is kind of taken care of. So, you know, if we just have a look at, um, you know, splash screens, it's really as easy as, you know, you put an SVG under, the, uh, under the, the splash folder, okay, um, or, or a PNG. And then in your, you need to mark that as a build action, by the way, I should probably point that out. Uh, you need to mark that as a build action of Maui splash screen. And then, you know, within your, uh, within your application, or sorry, within your project file, you can basically say, hey, look, here's my splash screen, uh, given an SVG, give it a background color, give it a baseline so you can affect the, the, the size of it as well. And it will just basically build that into your application. Um, and you'll also see that uh, images work the same way, which is pretty cool because it used to be challenging to, to put images in. But now, basically, you go and throw an image or an SVG uh, under the images folder, and it's going to scale it nicely for you. So uh, some, some really nice tools there. And, you know, we won't go into that in, in any more detail, but it's, it's basically a, a capability that's there that's, that's really nice. Now, one important aspect of, uh, of 
design, and you'll notice designers talk about this all the time, is, is fonts. They all get excited about fonts. Uh, and the reason why is because fonts actually make a very big difference to your application uh, and, and how your application feels. So with fonts, um, you know, again, it's, it's pretty much built into the environment. So fonts, uh, if I sort of come over here, fonts, basically, you can grab a, a font. You know, I would go to fonts.google.com. That's a, a pretty good place to go. And then underneath resources, there's a fonts folder. You can throw some fonts in there, some TTF files. Okay. And then during your builder, uh, so in your, your Maui program, we can basically go and make reference to those fonts. We can say, hey, let's configure those fonts and then let's um, you know, reference that TTF file, give it a nice name, and then you can very easily use it within your application. Okay, so just as a, a really simple example here, uh, if we go and have a look at this page here, I'm just gonna move this window out of the way. Okay, this page here has some fonts on it, right? It has a custom font called uh, Allegria and Source Sense Pro. Okay, so um, basically, if I was to have a look at the, try to get that out of the way. Sorry, there's a little zoom window in my way here. If I go and have a look at that page, okay, uh, basically, now that I've referenced the font, I can just go and you know specify it as the font family for my primary font, for example. So this is using styles. Um, so what's what's cool about this? Uh, it's very easy, very easy to use. Now, one thing to be aware of uh, that used to be a challenge, and now it's not a challenge, uh, but it is something to consider, and that is fonts will by default scale. Okay, so I'm getting older, uh, and as you get older, what happens is you start using bigger font sizes uh, inside of your devices. So if I somehow remember how to use Android, and I go and have a look, at my Android device, which has decided to kill itself. Hang on a second. Okay, let's search settings. Oh, we've got a lovely black screen. The Android emulators decide to kill itself. Wonder if it's coming back. Let's have a look. Coming back? Nope, that's not coming back. All right, let's uh, let's close that Android emulator down, and let's go and and restart our application. Let me come back over here. Where's my little go button? Let's give that a go. All right, um, let's, let me just switch back over here. Okay, cool. So what I wanted to show you, um, and we'll, we'll wait for the, the emulator to boot back up, um, is inside of um, all of our labels, okay? Labels are, gonna, are going to scale by default, okay? Uh, which means that if somebody goes into a large uh, view, then or, or, you know, increase the font sizes, it's going to scale those up. So uh, if you don't want that to happen, then you should set fonts, font auto scaling enabled to false. Okay. And the reason I mentioned that is because, you know, if fonts are going to be scaling, it's going to affect your UI design. And so you have to take that into account. Okay. So um, that's just a little, little note there. The other thing I wanted to point out as well, uh, and we're waiting for my emulator to, to launch back up, if it's going to, um, and that is that, we also have some additional controls as well in regards to fonts, and that is to do with character spacing and, and line heights as well. So often what we'll find is designers will give us uh, a font, but they'll also expect a particular spacing as well. So uh, that's another couple of cool little things that you can, uh, can use as well to control the output. Just having a look at this, this emulator here. I oh, thank you. If you could just fix my emulator now, that would be great. Working on it? Starting deployment to pixel. Hmm, I'm not convinced. Let me see if I can quickly. Hmm. 
Give this bill to cancel. We'll see if we can get that Android emulator back up. We might even bring up the Android device manager. We might have booted ourselves. All right. I don't know. Looks like it's. All right. You got this, Android. Oh. <laughs> Android says no. All right. Let's try that one more time. Because it'd be nice to see some of this stuff live. Alrighty, not so much. All right, let's come back over here and have a look. Okay, let's let's do some of this. So, auto font scaling, something to to consider um, in the sample application. Go and uh, and watch this up. I can sort of change the character spacing, the line spacing here as well. All right, uh, styles. So now styles are something um, which, as a designer, or implementing designs, uh, you should definitely get into using. Uh, some of the earlier presentations mentioned uh, styles and where they're available. So basically now uh, there's the colors and there's the style XAML that's a part of your resource dictionary. I like to use uh, styles for things like colors, also for things like sizes of padding, you can use that as well. Um, and you basically set up your styles and always use your styles. And the idea here is it's gonna give you a lot better consistency uh, inside of your application. Also, it means as you're building your application and using styles, you get to see how it's working. And then it's going to allow you to tweak it later on as well. So when your designer comes back and says, hey, I want that to, to change. Okay, um, here's another one, themes. We talked about themes earlier on, on about light and dark themes. And, uh, you know, there were some good demonstrations of how we use app theme binding to give us a light and a dark mode. I wanted to just cover off on a, a few other things that you can do here. Um, and really, really, really really want to show you. I wonder if I might, I might just cut, shut down Visual Studio and reload it. Um, now, like all good devs, I'm using the, the preview versions of everything. I don't know how this is going to go. I think this is, let's find out. All right, here's a couple of things with theming um, that you should be aware of. So um, not only have we got the theming, we can specify light and dark. Uh, there's a few additional things you can do as well. You can find out what the current theme is by having a look at the requested themes. And there's, there's three themes that are available. There's light, there's dark, and there's basically undefined. And undefined just means use whatever the system is using. So if the user's got their mode in, in light mode or dark mode, uh, it'll basically swap uh, for your user. You can also respond to theme changes as well. So you can basically hook up to an event. Uh, and so you can see when the user changes between them. Uh, and you can also set it programmatically. So if in, in your application, if you want a little switch which said, hey, I want to go between light mode and dark mode or system, um, you can basically go ahead and just directly set the user app theme, uh, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to give this one more crack. Let's see what happens. Okay, um, but in the meantime, I wanted to just show you on the themes page, something else which, that's kind of interesting with themes. And that is, you know, you can use this sort of syntax here, which is, you know, hey, I got the light mode and I got the dark mode, right? But you can actually do other things as well. Like I've got a couple of styles here, like a light theme and a dark theme, right? And here I'm actually specifying different fonts. I even set a rotation just for, for giggles here, right? Um, and actually, and when you do app theme binding, you're not limited to just setting colors on things. You can set any property you want, right? So in this case, and I wish I could show you this, and maybe I will in a moment, um, for an image, I can say, hey, you know what? When I'm in light mode, 
show this image in the source property here or show a different image when I'm in dark mode. And you can take that one step further and you can actually sort of do things like you can change uh, styles and text based on app theme binding as well. So app theme binding is, is actually a lot more powerful than just setting uh, colors inside an application. All right, let's see how that build's going. Says done building. Starting emulator. All right, we'll leave that one. Leave that one rocking for a little bit and see how we go. All right. Um, so that's some of the things that we've already sort of, uh, you know, some of the core parts. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is just some layouts. Now, for those of you who are familiar or have come from a Xamarin Forms world, layouts are quite similar. Um, so there's a, a there's a bunch of different layouts, and the way that Maui works is you've got layout containers, and then you put controls inside of your layout containers, and these are the main containers that you would use. And I just wanted to quickly go through those and make sure people understand a little bit about uh, when you might use them. So stack layouts are, are one of the core controls that you'll use quite often. It's, uh, in, in Xamarin, there was just a stack layout, but now there is actually a couple of additional ones as well. There is the, the horizontal stack layout and the vertical stack layout, which are the preferred options. But what this is all about is it's all about um, if you've got content that needs to lay out, say, down a page, like what we have here, you know, where we're laying out controls down a page, it's a really good choice, right? It's very efficient. Um, and so if you need to lay out things vertically or horizontally, this is great. What it's not good for is overlapping elements, right? Which is uh, a part of a lot of designs. But for simple things, uh, it's, it's a very, very good control. One of the limitations, or not, I won't say it's a limitation, one of the things with all of the layout containers is they don't have scrolling built in. Okay, and particularly if you're working on mobile devices, you'll often find that you want to support horizontal and vertical. And so often the amount of space you have available is going to change. So scroll view, uh, you'll find that you use quite a bit to, to wrap content in so that it can, it can uh, scroll. The next one, and this is my recommendation, my top tip here is get to know the grid layout. Uh, this is pretty much the layout I use for most things. And if in doubt, use a grid layout is what I say. Uh, it's great for aligning controls. It's great for responsive design because you can say, hey, I want this to be 75% of the width of the page. Um, it's also great for overlapping elements as well. So it sounds like it's quite limited, but actually you can put as many controls into a particular cell as you like. Uh, and it's great for root layout. What I mean is the page layout. So this here, uh, this this uh, layout here, for example, is one that I did, and it's just using a grid, okay? But you can see that there's actually a lot of elements overlapping here. Uh, and so you can certainly do that with grids as well. Uh, the next one is flex layout. Flex, lay flex layout is fantastic for when things need to wrap. And if you need to be responsive to different sizes, perhaps you've got a layout that works on uh, desktop and mobile, this is a really great layout. It's probably familiar to a lot of people who do sort of web work. Um, but that's a, that's a great layout choice. And for those of you who want the most control uh, and probably the most performance as well, there's the absolute layout. So this is what's referred to as an unmanaged container. It allows you to position things exactly where you want, pixel perfect layout effectively. So uh, absolute layout is, is the option for that. Now, of course, you're not just gonna use one of these layout containers, you're gonna use a mix and match of them in order to design your applications. And there's not always one way of doing things. Uh, so it really is depending on the situation and what you're most comfortable with. Uh, often, you know, what you'll find is you'll have stack layouts inside of grid layouts, uh, et cetera. Uh, so you be combining different layouts together. Here's an example of a really simple UI. How might we put this together? I would start off with, say, a grid as my container. And I've got three rows. I've got one for the header. I've got one for the body and one for the footer. Okay. And in terms of uh, grids, how this would be done is I might have a fixed width here and I might have a fixed width down here. And here I give it what is referred to as like a, a star layout, which basically means use up all the available space. Okay, so that would be the initial layout. And then inside of that, um, I would end up putting some controls. Okay, so a button down here and an image up there, for example. In this middle section, I might have a vertical stack layout. And the reason why is because I basically want the stuff inside of, inside of here 
to, to lay out vertically. Okay, I've got a label, a label. I got this, we'll talk about that in a second. And then I got some text, okay? And so I would just put that in there and lay it out like so. Now this, this other bit that I sort of talked about here, for that, because we want it to all sort of lay out in a nice grid-like fashion, a grid would be a good candidate there. And so here I might have a grid with three columns and two rows, basically. Okay, so, um, so that's an example of a, of a simple layout there. For those of you just entering into this, uh, into the, the, the crazy world of Maui layouts, here's some properties that you're going to want to know about. Uh, horizontal options and vertical options. This is where we can specify where we want something to be uh, either, you know, at the horizontally at the start, center, or end, vertically at the start, center, or end, or fill. Uh, width requests and height requests allow you to specify how large we'd like uh, a piece of content. Margin provides us the spacing around the control. Padding is the spacing within a container. Uh, and spacing is actually the spacing between things in, say, a stack layout, or there is also row spacing and column spacing as well. Okay, so there's some of the, the properties. I'm just going to jump over here and see what, see what this is doing. See if I can boot this in the guts while we're talking. Because I'll be very sad if this doesn't run for me. All right, back over here. Here's some other properties that, um, that are actually pretty useful. Uh, so things called transforms. And this is for when you get into some, uh, some more advanced UIs. There's things like translation, scale, rotations, and opacity. And you can see over here in the animation, I was hoping to show you this live, um, but you can see that we can rotate elements around, scale them, move them up and down very easily and very efficiently. Okay, so these are properties that are really worth uh, learning more about. Um, and this is an example, this UI here, this is an, actually a UI I built in, in Xamarin, but it actually transfers across very well to Maui. But the idea here is what I wanted to show is that there's some pretty cool stuff happening in this little animation, right? But it's actually really simple, right? So those transforms I talked about, opacity, scale, translation, that's all that's happening here, right? So I've got this method here, animate front card during swipe. So as the user swipes, all I'm doing is getting, hey, getting this current view, right, which is my card, and I'm changing its opacity, right? So you watch this front card when I swipe, it starts going transparent. Next, we scale in the main character. So they start, as the card swipes, we're reducing its scale down. We're changing its translation, so we're actually moving it down a little bit as it goes, and we're adjusting the opacity of this character as well. Okay, so that's an example of how uh, some simple transforms can be used for really powerful layouts. And this is what I'm saying is when you see a layout that you're trying to replicate, um, just break it down into its, its smallest elements, just like you do with you know, any code that you, you write. As well as um, being able to specify those transforms and to be able to react to those transforms as the user does something inside your application, you can also animate all of those as well. So basically any, any property really you can animate, but these ones here, the translation, scale, rotation, opacity, actually have uh, animation extension methods built in, which are, which are super handy uh, and help you create a more dynamic UI. Here's a, here's a simple example. Uh, you know, let's say you're doing a logon page and you want when you type in the wrong answer, the cookie monster to shake, right? To, you know, like a Mac logon. Right, it's just a matter of sort of translating. Don't worry about this chicken; he's 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 just there. Um, but if you uh, have a look at these translates, okay, it's basically just translating it and just settling it down to, to zero. And you know, it's really easy, but it provides a, a really nice impact for your users. Here's something else that's really cool. And again, you can get all of these samples on my on my website. These are. Uh, these are basically UIs I, I used to build. I used to live code uh, building out these UIs. And, and they're actually in Xamarin at the moment, but they, they will be, I am in the process of moving into Maui and, and the translation is, is very easy. But this cool UI where uh, we have this control that sort of folds down, okay? Um, 
it's actually just simple transforms, right? Again, have a look at the UI you're trying to build and just break it down into tiny bits. What's it actually doing, right? And so when we do the drop down, we're basically rotating something to minus 90, right? Which means it's basically end on, you can't see anything, right? We're changing its opacity to zero, so it's invisible, right? And then what we're doing is we're fading it to one, which means it makes it visible. And we're also rotating the x-axis. So what it's doing, if you watch really carefully here, as those fold down, I'm not sure if I can control it here. Yeah. As those, those elements fold down, all they're doing is changing opacity and rotation. That's all they're doing. Okay. And then this thing pops up and we do a bit of rotation there. So very simple thing. And the closing of the drop down is exactly the same. No, well, just in, in opposite, obviously. So if you want to create some cool UIs, understand a little bit more about these properties. And then there's also this part of this UI that does a nice little flip, right? A flip is, uh, is again, just a simple translation. So we grab a, a control that we're going from, a visual element from and to, and what we do is we rotate its Y. So we rotate it until it's at its side, and then we swap it out for a different view and then rotate that back around. And that gives this nice little uh, flipping effect that we see. Okay, you watch when, uh, when you click on one of these buttons, it calls the flip and just flips it around. All right, let's see what's going on over here. It's deploying to pixel. Now this emulator is toast. Let me just read only. All right, what I might do is I'm, I'm, we could get really brave and we could just create a whole new image. Let's, let's do that while I'm talking. Let's just create a new image. So I'm going to create another pixel in, pixel here. I'm going to call this uh, uh, API 33 working. Uh, and we'll just create a whole new, cancel this build for the moment. And so what this should do is it should create me a, an emulator if I'm lucky. Anyway, let's, let's keep talking while that's happening. Okay, lists and collections. Um, this, as I mentioned here, is the bread and butter of most applications, right? Most mobile applications specifically are, are gonna be, you know, you, you have a list of things, you click on a list, you go to a details page. So the bread and butter, as I refer to it as. Okay, um, now I, again, this is part of my sample application, which we'll have to wait for that emulator to build, but. What I have here is I've got some pages here um, which just have different list view layouts, right? And in fact, this is all just one page. It's got some buttons down the bottom here uh, that just swap the data template. And what I wanted to uh, show is that you can create uh, quite compelling layouts just with data templates. And we'll, we'll see how one of those is sort of broken down uh, in a moment. And so the simple things that you need to learn to, to create it, like for example, this UI over here, okay, and, and I'll just draw here. Let me just come back here. Let's stop that image. Let's see if this one's going to play. Because it's Android emulators, it'll take a while, so we'll just leave that going. Okay. Um, so let's say these cards that we have over here. These are implemented just using a few simple things. Um, so a grid, okay? We start off with a grid. And the grid that we have here is basically a grid which has two columns. Okay. Uh, one, for the, one for the image, one for the text here. The image, it's, uh, the image itself, okay? is basically just an image, but what we do is we add a border to it. So if we sort of zoom in here, right, we can see that there's a border around this. And in fact, there's a border around the grid as well, which is how we get the rounded corners and the drop shadow, okay? Um, but one of the cool things that we can do is we can also clip images now as well. So have a look at that image clipping capability. So that's basically controls that. Uh, we have shadow controls as well now um, and gradients. Now, Gradients are one of those funny things that they're really effective when you use them nicely. Um, they're really ugly when you don't use them effectively. But you know, let's assume you're working with a designer who's helping you out with gradients. 
here's a really simple example of something you can do very easily now in, in, in Maui is that from this corner here, I have this gradient, a radial gradient that comes out from this corner, right? So it's from white to transparent, basically. Okay, and so it's creating that um, it's it's creating that nice little glow there. So you know that's a that's a pretty easy layout to. Oh, let's see if we can. Zoinks! All right, let's come back here. I think it's it went out of presenter mode. All right, let's see what's going on over here. Let's see if we, yeah, Android is just, Android's not happy with the world. There is one booting up over here. We are. Let's move this Android emulator. Just to this desktop. We, we may get there yet. All right, let's have a quick look at that, um, that layout that we have. Uh, so in the page here, this collection page, okay, what I have is I've got five data templates, card one, two, three, four, five, okay? and. This is this is basically how they're laid out, and and what you'll see is it's it's actually not that uh, it's not that crazy. We've got things like a, a border element, okay. So what this is giving us is giving us a, a rounded rectangle there. Um, I've applied a shadow to it, so we can do that. And I'd recommend after after the talk, um, you know, go and have a look at this code, pull it apart, see what happens. Uh, then we've got our grid. We mentioned we had a grid with two columns. Uh, we have a border uh, that we have in there, which is around an image which is clipped with an ellipse. Okay, so again, you can uh, very easily do that sort of image clipping. And then this here is, I mentioned that the text is done with a vertical stack layout. So that's a, a vertical stack layout here. Uh, and then we have the background of the grid, which is done with a radial gradient brush. Okay, so um, inside of this particular sort of sample page, what I have is I've got an example of each of those different layouts that you have and just sort of how to swap between those data templates as well. All righty. Um, what about when we have to go outside of the box? What happens when you have a layout that there's just no controls available within Maui, which will allow you to, to work with it? So the technologies I would have a look at here, um, I'd have a look at Skiersharp and Maui Graphics. So what these provide you is a cross-platform way of drawing the UIs. Uh, so basically where you want to take full control over the rendering process. And so for example, this on the slide here is just a simple um, uh, custom control, okay? But what it, what it had to do uh, in this case was it had to have, uh, you know, this, this sort of gradient here, but it had to have this cutout for the thumb, right? To, to be able to move back and forth. And, you know, there's no control within Maui or within Xamarin Forms that would allow you to do that. And so uh, you can certainly create uh, custom controls in, in Skiersharp or in Maui graphics. I, at the moment, tend to prefer Skiersharp, uh, probably because of familiarity, but also I find it's a little bit more powerful um, than, than Maui graphics. Uh, having said that, Maui graphics uh, doesn't have the same sort of size of dependency that Skia Sharp has. So, um, but either, either one is gonna give you a cross-platform way of rendering your UIs. Okay. Uh, if you have to do animations, then Lottie is a great choice as well. So Lottie uh, is basically uh, something that Adobe After Effects outputs, uh, their little JSON files. These are some nice little touches you can put into your application. So they're very small JSON files. And in order to use them and, you know, have a little cat playing with the ball over here, you just need to add in the Skia Sharp extended Maui NuGets, uh, bootstrap it in the app builder. This is the one that isn't documented anywhere, but if you don't do it, it just won't work. Uh, what I mean by that 
he is. Try and get this deployed. Uh, what you need to do is you need to add this line here. This is super important. If you're going to be using Skier Sharp, put in this use Skier Sharp because if you don't do that, it's it's not going to work and it's just going to have an exception that's that's very unhelpful. Um, so add that in. Just going to wait for this. Wait for this to build while we sort of finish off. So um, once you've got that, you import the, the JSON file. Uh, you put it into the raw folder inside of your project. Uh, incidentally, the raw folder is actually a, a pretty cool uh, place if you need to deploy any files with your application, whether it's like config files or JSON files, um, you know, even data files, anything that you want. If you put them into the raw folder, so the raw folder, what I'm referring to here is underneath resources, I've got this raw folder, right? And if you basically put anything into, into this raw folder, it's gonna get deployed with your application. Uh, and there's also APIs to just read those files in. So that's actually a really good place to, to put things for, for data files. And in this case, you know, we've got the, the cat playing animation, JSON. Really wish this machine would work. All right. One of the things uh, as developers we uh, are very good at is we, we, you know, good developers copy, great developers paste. So we're used to getting information and, and our code from Stack Overflow. The same thing happens with designers. Uh, I just wanted to give you a few resources to, to finish off that you might find useful for your applications and for your designs. The first one that I like to use is something called Dribble. That's Dribble with three Bs. Uh, it's basically a place where it's kind of like Stack Overflow for developers, uh, for designers rather. People will post up their designs here. And what is really useful about this is just understanding or looking at or getting inspiration from proper designers about, you know, what fonts, fonts they use, what colors they choose, um, you know, some of their, their layout ideas as well. So I use Dribble quite a bit. Uh, the other one, if you're looking more for how do I implement this UI, is this thing called snapits.dev. And what this is, is a whole bunch of different UIs built in uh, Maui or Xamarin Forms. And again, they're, they're, they're quite similar uh, in terms of layout. So, you know, when you learn one, you kind of learn the other. Uh, and each of these has a GitHub repository associated with it. So uh, you can have a look at, you know, like here's, here's one that I did. You can go and click on that and then you can go and have a look at the GitHub repo and, uh, and, and get that information. And I think these links were mentioned in, in an earlier presentation. If you want to get some good ideas about um, <coughs> implementations, uh, Javier has uh, the .NET Maui showcase, good looking uh, UI samples in, in both Maui and Xamarin Forms. And he's also got the awesome .NET Maui as well. All right, this is still having a rough time. Unfortunately, I'm not sure this is gonna work for us. I wonder, hang on a moment. No, this is a new simulator, of course. I was thinking maybe we already had the deployed application on here, but, uh, but not so fortunate. Anyway, the good news for all of you all is that uh, you don't have to see me fumble with my emulator anymore, but also these slides um, and the sample app that I was gonna show you that basically has all the code for all the things that we talked about and little samples of each other um, is available at this bit.ly link here as well. And, uh, you know, go through and, and, and have a look at that. I'll probably have some code that I'll push, so maybe have a look at it a little bit later on. Um, but go and have a look at that and, uh, and check that out. Also, um, some other, you know, interesting resources that I, that I mentioned. Um, go and have a look at those. Feel free to go and have a look at my, uh, my website as well. I've got quite a few uh, design challenges because I don't have a... 
don't have an environment here. I may as well show you just quickly. And as I said, these are not updated uh, for Maui yet. But what I have on this page here is a, there's a lot of animated GIFs here. Um, all of these UIs that I've built previously to give you an idea of the sorts of things that you, are, you can implement in, in Maui and in fact in Xamarin as well. So these are all um, UIs, they all have GitHub links as well. Um, and you know, for example, when you've got like a crazy UI like this one, down here, this mountain mobile with these transitions, that's where I tend to use a lot of scare sharp. Okay, so, um, so feel free to go and, and have a look at those. Let me just quickly check how our emulator's going. And I'm pretty sure it's a sad story. So yeah, nothing there. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll finish off there. So uh, let me know if there's any, any questions in the chat. Uh, otherwise, uh, go and download the sample application. And uh, yeah, off you go. Thanks, Back. Kim. Thank you very, very much. Let's see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, so Scott Thompson, yeah, thanks, Kim. That was great. Um, there's a question here. If your app can deploy to either iPhone or iPad, what are the approaches used to handle the different sizes, et cetera, of devices? So your yeah, own tablets, I guess. Yeah. Um, who was our last presenter? Um, Brady. Brady. So Brady uh, kind of covered that uh, with, his, with his email application. Mm -hmm. So one thing you can do is there is, uh, if we go and have a look, we could even just bring up a little bit of Maui documentation. Let's, let's go to Google. Let's go and have a look at. Okay. Now we're handling device differences. It's probably in the, it's already <laughs> documented. It's already documented. Um, let's see what we have. Uh, another good place to follow is, is Gerald, actually. I should mention that. Uh, just let me see if I can. Cameras on. Some features. That's probably some device features. features. But look, you can. Um, if you're going to have substantial, my view is if you're going to have substantially different UIs. So, mm. for example, if a, if a, you know, your mobile application, like on your phone, it might be, you know, you've got a list and you click on a list, you go to the details page, right? And that might be different to uh, if you're on a tablet or on a desktop, in which case you yeah. might have a list there and you might have the details there. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, what I like to do is I actually like to use different, different layouts for those. Mm -hmm. um, but you can certainly customize um, the, the UIs. Uh, oh, right. So uh, what you mean is you're, instead of uh, what we've seen sometimes is people might do sort of cache if, Mac Catalyst or Windows, yep. um, you would prefer a slightly different sort of compositional route, you know, DI the right sort of components or layouts based on your platform? Yeah, if yeah. Um, if they're substantially different. Yeah. If, if they're just tweaking, you know, um, then I think it's fine to just just modify a few properties. Yeah, cool. um, but if they're, if they're substantially different, I just use a different layout entirely. Oh, cool. Uh, so Scott's got another follow-up question. Uh, so for these different layouts, uh, do you swap them in and out when compiling? No, I don't normally. Um, I'll normally just have some different layouts and I'll just load them. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's you know, what we saw in the, in the previous uh, talk. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I'll normally do it. Cool. Thanks for the question, Scott. Yeah. Oh, actually, question. following up there. Um, cool. Uh, so he means is that sometimes yeah. uh, okay. you can't do a, an all-in-one yeah. XAML file. Computer, or whatever, just having, you know, a different XAML file for a different platform, I guess, for that control. Yeah, or well, sometimes it just becomes a little bit cumbersome. Like you could, you, you know, you could uh, try and do some things with, you know, grid sizing or whatever. But if your UIs are fundamentally different, mm -hmm. right, you've got two choices. Either you have like a layout for tablet and a layout for phone, right, or a better option potentially is to, uh, use composition, right? Mm -hmm. So you know you ha might have a you might have a custom control for your list view and your details, right? And then you kind of have shell pages based on the uh, device yeah, platform. Yeah. So you say, hey, let's put the you know the, the list view here uh, in in one layout, and in the other layout, say let's put the list view over here. Yeah. So that you know, uh, makes a lot of sense. That's good. Yep. Good advice. Thank you. Um, any more questions from uh, Brisbane or Sydney or online? 
Andy says, uh, thanks, Kim. Great tips. No problems. Um, I'm just having trouble finding it at the moment, but um, there is some good docs about um, basically saying, hey, if I'm on iOS, you know, use this theme or use this control All or right. we'll set these properties as well. So beautiful. Cool. Um, well, Idiom, that's the one. <laughs> you go. Do you maybe yes. elaborate a little bit more on that one? Idiom, idiom is, uh, let's, let's do a search here because that's probably going to be, it's going to be in here somewhere, right? There we are. Device idiom. <laughs> device idiom, right? So there's a few things that you have. You've got uh, a device idiom. A device idiom is, you know, oh, actually it's not going to show me the, uh, let's see if we can oh, see the we, idiom. We the other docs page, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. idiom says, hey, am I running on a desktop or a phone or a tablet or a mm. TV? Um, is it unsupported or is it on a watch? Uh, so you can use that to customize. And this is all at runtime, right? So you don't actually have to do the pre-processor directives. You can actually build it and yeah, that's right. uh, run run the same binary in two different platforms. Uh, right. Yeah, effectively. Yes. Yeah, okay, effectively. cool. Yep. Um, and then there's platform as well. So what are we running on? We're we running on iOS or uh, Android or Someone. Tizen, Windows. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tizen, that's right. Mac. That's on the watches and the yep. TVs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ooh. All right. I can jump on the uh, on the chat and we'll uh, and I'll show some of those things. Oh, fantastic. Oh, um, thank you very much for your your question, Scott. And everyone else, um, I might now hand back to Matt Goldman because I think he's he's got a. A new introduction for us and uh, yeah thanks kim it was a great show i loved your slides it was a really good story very <laughs> impressive I, I even if the email didn't work uh, was for me that was a, a, a extremely valuable uh talk so uh, take a lot of tips away from that